So I recently got a request from someone uh, saying, Patrick, could you make a video on who makes better entrepreneurs, younger siblings or older siblings? And I said, you know, what a great topic to do this on. I said, let me do a little research. So here's what I'm going to cover with you today. Here's what I'm going to cover. We're going to have some fun with this as well. One, I'm going to cover with you the advantages and disadvantages of being the older as well as the younger sibling. Two, I'm going to tell you about a study that was done recently, just a few months back, that was shared on Washington Post by 377,000 high school students that they did a study on to find out if the sibling, first, second, third child has anything to do with success, IQ, personality, any of that. Then we'll do an int interesting exercise. Out of the 43 presidents that we've had in the United States of America, how many have been the firstborn, how many have been the middle, and how many have been the youngest to become the president? That'll definitely shock you when we do that. And I'll ask you, before I tell you the actual numbers, I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are on that. So let's, let's get right into it. So this is a very interesting topic because I've heard so many people tell me, well, you know, one of the reasons why I haven't made it is because I'm the younger sibling. And you know, always the older sibling has so many advantages. Well, you know, the reason why I didn't make it as a business because the older sibling this, and I'm the older sibling, it's really the younger sibling learned everything from me. So is there really a code that one side has an edge over the other one? So let's go through it. Here's what I found out, okay? Here's what I found out based on doing a little research on this. Younger, what, what advantages do you have by being a younger sibling. One, you get bullied, which means you get tougher, right? The older sibling tends to bully the younger sibling, so that means the younger tends to get tougher. Two, you have someone to confide in. You have an older sibling to go and talk to about your problems, your issues, someone to speak to. Sometimes the older sibling doesn't have that. Third advantage, examples of mistakes to make and not to make. If that person makes it, you typically know, I don't want to do that. Like if the oldest gets a very bad spanking for doing something wrong, you can kind of look at it and say, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that again. Because if I do that, I don't want to get spanked like that by pops, right? Fourth, um, uh, you have a better teacher. There's a teacher teaching you. You have someone that's teaching you. Even if that person's five and you're two, you're learning from this five-year-old. You have an edge of learning from a five-year-old at two years old. Five, you have a better example. Someone setting an example to you on how to walk, how to kick how to play, how to talk, how to shake hands. There's someone giving you an example of that. Not lonely, you have a companion, so you always have a friend to play with. The older sibling didn't necessarily have that all the time for many years, and then you show up, but you have it all the time from the day you're born. Someone to compete against. There's that benefit of someone's bigger than you, so you're competing against them to outdo them, so you have an edge because you're competing against the older sibling. The younger may mature earlier, uh, because you're hanging around with older circles. So if you have an older brother, your older brother who's six years older than you, their friends are older, so you're automatically, if you're 12, you're hanging out with 18-year-olds, so you're mature, you're learning things sooner than an 18-year-old knows at 12, you're learning that. Those are some of the advantages that you have. Now, the disadvantage for a younger, a younger uh, child is you're in the shadow of an older one, you're babied a lot, so sometimes when a younger one is babied, you're you know, you don't have the same level of performance, so you're babied, so you always like can get away with crying. Oh, he did this to me, she did this to me. So you grow up being a baby almost a little bit. You can be baby a little bit, that's a disadvantage. Typically lower standards. Parents typically don't spank the younger one as much as they did the older one because they felt so bad after either, you know, spanking the oldest one so much that they don't want to do the same on the second or the third. Uh, constantly compared. You're constantly comparing, why can't you be like your older brother? Why can't you be like your older sister? Why can't you be like this? Can't you see how good she is? Can't you see how good he is? And, you know, uh, 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 you know, why can't you be like that person? There's a constant comparison you're dealing with. So now, that's for the younger side, okay? You may have more. I want to hear from your own story at the end, but that's the younger side. Let's look at the older side of being the older sibling. Here's the advantages. You have an experience in teaching. So you're constantly teaching. So from a young age, you learn how to teach. No, don't do this. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. Grab the fork like this you constantly become an automatic teacher from being older. Your experience in discipline, because you learn certain disciplines because you're raised at a higher standard by your parents, you learn about discipline. Uh, again, next point is raised in a higher standard environment. Parents typically, when they have their firstborn, they don't want to do anything wrong, so they typically discipline a lot more. And the second one, they are not as serious, and the third one, it gets looser and looser and looser. So the discipline goes lower, standard goes lower, but it's a lot higher with the first one, right? Four, parents demand more of you. As an older sibling, they demand more of you, and some respond well to it, some don't. But generally, when you're demanded and expected more, most people tend to rise up to it, not on all occasions, but you have higher demand from your parents. Fifth, more responsibilities given to you earlier. So you learn about responsibility. You learn how to babysit. 
maybe changing diapers, you know, certain ages, depending on how much the age difference is. You know, you have to look out for them, who they're dating, the boyfriend in high school, looking after your sister, looking after your brother. You're given more responsibilities on things to do. Stricter rules when you're older, which means you're going again by higher guidelines. Expectation a lot higher. Mentally, you look at yourself as a leader. You look at yourself as a leader because you're leading somebody. You're constantly leading that person, so you mentally believe you're a leader. You'll generally see in the siblings you know, depending on the position, not in all cases, but in most cases, there'll be a leader there because mentally they saw that as a leader. And you become a better communicator because you need to learn how to communicate. Uh, you need to learn how to challenge, how to push. You'll learn communication because you're teaching somebody that's uh, uh, younger than you. So you learn how to communicate much better. These are advantages. Disadvantages. If you do something wrong and a, your younger brother or sibling does something, it was all your fault. See what happened? Because you did this, now he's doing this. It's all your fault. You, they, he learned that from you. She learned that from you. It's all your fault. You ever heard that before? That's sometimes what the older sibling will hear. Constantly being compared. So comparison is the same. If the younger does better, you're going to be compared to them as well. Just like if the older does better. Comparison is a disadvantage for both sides. Pressure to perform. Example, since you're the first, you have to set the example for your sibling. You need to perform better. You need to get better grades. You need to do this. You need to do that. You're kind of, that's a lot of pressure. And expect to be the first on a lot of things. You got to go to college because if you don't, they're not going to follow you. You got to be the first in family to do this. You got to be in the first family to do that. So all of that stuff, you know, can be a disadvantage at times mentally and emotionally. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is there real lineage to see if it makes a better leader to be the oldest, middle, younger? What is it? Who makes a better leader, right? So scientists who did a study on this, scientists who did a study on this, and you can actually, we'll put the link on the bottom in the description so you can go look at the study. It's a very, very fascinating study. You can buy the study that was done by uh, um, this organization. Extremely fascinating study when you go through it. Published in the Journal of Research and Personality. These are scientists who did this study. So let me tell you, it's the, it's the biggest study done of 377 high school students analyzing their traits, okay? Analyzing their traits. And this is what they came up with by the time they were done. Scientists have discovered whether being a first, second, or third child makes a difference. Okay, Washington Post. We can put the image up here, Elias, so they can see the cover at the top. In terms of personality traits and how you rate them, a 0.02 correlation doesn't get you anything of note. University of Illinois psychology professor Brent Roberts, the study lead author, said in a statement, you are not going to be able to see it with the naked eye. You're not going to be able to tell the two apart sitting right next to each other and see the differences between them. It's not noticeably by anybody. The message of this study is that the birth order probably should not influence your parenting because it's not meaningfully related to your kid's personality or IQ. What they're trying to say is it means nothing to be the first, the middle, the last, the youngest. It means nothing. To be the first, the middle, or the last. Nothing. On 377 students. And I know a lot of times we want to find an alibi to say why we made it or why we didn't make it based on, well, it's the younger that's better, it's the older that's better, it's the middle that's better. It's not anything to be shown. And this is on 377,000 kids that we're looking at. I think an entrepreneur is a choice you make. So I said, let me go and find out, you know, if you think about leaders because entrepreneurism is really being a leader. It's another vote of being a president. You're not running for president of a country. You are running for a presidency of a company, which means you need to get votes. And as an entrepreneur, clients vote for you. Your employees vote for you. You buy their vote with them wanting to work for you. If an employee works for you, that's a vote. If a client does business with you, that's a vote. If a client buys from you, that's a vote. So essentially, you're running for president as an entrepreneur, right? So the same goes as becoming a president. So we pulled up all the 43 presidents. I know if you look up Wikipedia, it shows 44 presidents, but we have 44 term presidents because one president ran for president twice. Grover Cleveland, he lost once, I think it was 24 and 26, or 23 and 25, he lost once, and then somebody became president and became president again, then they changed the law. So we've had 43 presidents, okay? And how many of them would you say have been the oldest, how many have been the middle, and how many have been the youngest? Think about this. How many have been the oldest siblings, how many have been right in the middle, how many have been right in the middle, right in the, uh, lowest, youngest? What would you say? Where do you think the most is the youngest, 
the middle or the oldest? What would you say? What would you say? I'm curious. I am so curious. Now, let me tell you the answer what it is. Out of 43, 16 were the oldest sibling. 16 were the oldest sibling out of 43. Out of 43, 21 presidents were the middle child. And out of 43, six were the youngest child as a president. So there is not a trend between oldest, middle, or youngest. And if you say, well, there should be because the youngest doesn't seem like there's that many of it. Well, back in the days, people had 11 kids. People had 12 kids. People had eight kids, seven kids. So there was more in the middle. But you're looking at not really a trend. Oldest still at 16. Then you have middle at 21. Then the youngest at six. What does this tell you? This tells you whether you're the oldest, whether you're the youngest, whether you're the middle, it doesn't matter where you look at, you have an opportunity to lead. And it really comes down to you as the entrepreneur of you willing to want to do the work to take advantage of the gifts that you have, the only gifts that you have, because your gifts are going to be a lot more different than the other person's gift and the other sibling's gifts. What are you going to do with that? And the one measuring stick that no scientist has ever been able to figure out, the one measuring stick that no scientist can ever, no matter how much studies they do on this, you cannot find it. No matter how much study you do on the one word, no one can figure out the study on this. You know what the study is? Desire, ambition, determination. You cannot put a number on that. You cannot put it, say, youngest, middle, oldest. You cannot put that on that. The desire comes from you, whether you're the oldest, middle, youngest. No one can gauge that. No one can measure that. I don't care how many ways we cannot get a scanning thing for you. You don't have to go scan and say, okay, this one's going to go out there and do something big. There is no test for desire. Only you know when you watch this, you're by yourself, is your blood boiling. Only you know that. Only you know this when a kid is sitting there watching a flick saying, I want to be the next Rocky. I want to be the next president. I want to be the next Spielberg. I want to be the next. Only you know that. No one knows that. I don't know that. You know that. No one knew when I was a young guy, young kid, telling myself I want to make a difference and be here with my family. No one knew that. I watch his videos. I watch Rocky for multiple times. And at the end when, you know, Rocky says, if, if he can change and I can change, anybody can change. And I'm in a family where my mother's a communist. I relate to Drago. And my father's an imperialist. He believes in, you know, capitalism and all this stuff. And I have my father. And if we're coming to America, I got emotion every single time I watched that movie because it told me that we can make an impact around the world. I watched Rocky IV hundreds of times as a kid, translated in Farsi in Iran. And it changed the way I viewed the world. I wanted to be a hero for my family. My blood would boil watching that movie. My blood would boil watching that movie. And so you can't tell the difference on that. This is the part where the desires got to come within you. And so no matter how much of these, even this video right now, you're watching it, right? I'm really, what I want to hear from you guys, your story at the end, but even you watch this video right now and somebody tries to convince you that they have an edge over you or an upper hand over you, it's a bunch of bullshit. Don't believe any of it. Do not believe any of it. No one can measure your heart based on what you think about 24-7 when nobody's around. No one knows that. Backed up by action. If you're not willing to take the action, no one cares about you. No one does. History books, business books, movies, theater does not care if you don't want to take action. No one cares if you get emotional, but you don't get up and do something about it. No one cares if you have to get eight to nine hours of sleep every single night because that's the way you, you justify yourself you need more rest. Because your blood type is the type that you need eight to nine hours. No one cares about that kind of nonsense. If your blood is boiling and you want to do something about it, you're going to go get it done. So that's the study for you. These are the comparisons we made. We may be absolutely wrong. We may be completely off. Um, 377 high school students that were studied by, by these scientists. I highly recommend you watching the study. 43 different presidents that tells us we've had presidents that are the oldest, the middle, the youngest. We talk about the advantages and disadvantages. What I want to hear from you is this. I want to hear from you your story, okay? Are you the oldest? Are you the middle? Are you the youngest? Are you from a big family? Tell the story on the bottom. I'm really curious to hear some of the testimonies on how this story relates to you on the way you were raised with an older brother, an older sister, a middle. You were the oldest. How was it leading? I want to know because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of different stories to hear from your end with your testimonies. That's what I'm looking forward to hearing from on the comments. So make sure you comment on the bottom with your stories. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, Please do so to subscribe over here. And uh, if you're watching this video somewhere else that someone took off our website and put it on their website, you can always go to my website, patrickbaydavid.com, 
and you can go on this link. Let's put that ring sound, Ilya. There we go. I like that. You can go to this website, patrickbydavid.com, and uh, see other articles and videos that we have there as well. Thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Take care. I must break you. If I can change, I think that everyone will change. And today. you can change. You can change. Everybody can change. Everybody can change.